Hey everybody. So I wanted to show you guys how to, in Python, just use the print statement. And this can be really useful for when you wanna troubleshoot scripts. I actually didn't use this or really know about it for a long time because I never tested it. And then I was working on a really complicated script and um, you know I had some Python nodes in there and I put the print in there um, after, I don't know where it was or what exactly got me to do it, but I started to use it to print um, outputs at different functions in different spots to try to find out what was wrong with it. And it made it so much easier to troubleshoot my scripts. And I've worked on some pretty crazy complicated things in the past that I didn't do that with. I would just rely on outputs and I would change the out. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I never tried print. Um, but now that I know about it, I use it all the time. So I wanted to show an example of it. And this is actually, I use ChatGPT to generate this example. I've got another example over here to the right, which we'll look at as well. And this one's a more simple, simple one. Um, I wanted to pull up one of my scripts that, I did, that I've done this with, but I couldn't remember which ones and, um, and, and I think the late, the last one I could have pulled uh, that I think I've done this with was uh, one at my company's. And i not super comfortable uh, opening that one and, and pointing at stuff and sharing it. So I just created this sample real quick. But it's really easy to, uh, to use the print. So all you've got to do is go up to view and then you show console. All right. And then you'll see some things. It's just telling you, hey, it's it's saved a backup, um, and it's just reporting that. It'll also do other things when you're running your scripts as well. You'll see just different log information there. But what we can do is print to that. We can print to the console, and it's really easy to do. So I've got this example here, and what I'm going to do is just uh, quickly run it. And actually, let me make sure everything looks right. Okay. And then uh, we might need to change. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So we've got two inputs. We've got our, our duck sizes and then we have our velocity. And don't ask me if this is right. I don't know. ChatGPT generated this and I did some refactoring on it. But um, this is going to be a, still a good example. And then we'll look at a, a, an easier one. So... One of the errors down here, so we've got a try statement, it's going to return uh, an error based off of certain things. It's also going to pr print an output as well that's more defined rather than this output. So we can have our numbers like you see here, and then we can also have um, a more defined output that might define kind of what's going on in that just for more information while we're building out a Python script. So I'm going to save and run that and let me actually put like let me just make that like that and now if we run it you'll see down here that there's not enough values to to impact and it's saying there's a error in processing duct three so this is a for loop so it's looping through and it actually will specify which duct so now we can see there's an error there's an error with that last duct but we still get an output here which is nice. So it'll still work, you know, throughout the script, but then we, we've captured that issue. And what's cool is you can even tie this into like a logging platform. So if you um, put in these errors, you can log them in the future. So, uh, and that's, that's really good for circling back and, and fixing these things because there's a lot of unknowns and that's actually what this exception uh, as E down here is for is for catching some of those unknown errors that might pop up. So, all right. So this is the duct error. I'm going to go back and fix this. And then down here, all I'm going to do is just remove that and click run. And we'll see kind of the same thing except for, for the uh, velocity piece of it. So this, this part right here kicked off. And that's what we're getting. So we're just getting an index error. So it looked for that specific error and then returned this 
uh, string right here. So pretty simple, but if you know the errors, you can build those in there. And again, you could be logging this stuff. So in the future, say you've got everything built in, but again, there, there can be weird things that can cause errors. And if you track that stuff in a database, then you can know, oh, hey, you know, 10 people ran this. Two of them had errors multiple times this week. Maybe I need to jump on a call and see what's going on and how I can help them, how I can fix this script. So that information can be really helpful aside from just building it and testing it while you build it. All right, so the last one I wanted to show is this uh, exception error. And so this will print if there is a problem with it. And I can't remember how I got that to error, so let me see something. Okay, so just took me a second, I Trying to remember what I did earlier. So uh, I just put a couple strings there. So you can imagine like getting an element and then pulling in the wrong data for some reason. Uh, what this last error will do is, is catch that. So now what we're seeing is we're seeing all the outputs like we expect uh, for the first two. And then the last one is saying error and processing duck three, and then it actually returns that error. So can't multiply sequences by non-int um, of type string. So I pass in string. It's not supposed to have a string. It's supposed to have a number there, and it caused that error. So now what I can do is maybe that was a, a string of numbers, and so you can see we got the same one. So maybe by testing this I didn't know that and so what I can do is build in the script I can say hey if I get a string convert it to a number you know if that is a number if it's like some sort of um, like if it's a alphabetical value character then that might indicate something else but if it's if there's a number then just convert that string to a, an integer so we can use it um, so we can catch some of those things while we're testing and then um, make that a lot easier than just simply relying on the uh, error statement that Python will generate within Dynamo and then um, also just relying on the output. So it just makes things a lot easier when you're, when you're testing these things or building them out. All right, so I'm going to just close that. And then over here, it's... Essentially what I'm going to show you is the same thing except for this is a really simple example. All we're doing here is this function is just going to add an extra value that's just going to make this um, a index out of range. So, and then I've got, um, what we're going to do is run actually all three of these just like we did with the other one. So, uh, the first one I'm going to show you is this index out of range one. So. With this plugged in, if we click run, and actually, let me go over here. These shouldn't uh, run again since we're not changing anything, but just want to make sure. All right, so if we run this, we'll see that the index error occurred. List index out of range. Now, this is intentional. That's what this is for. Now, if I change this to zero and then run it again, or actually save and run, we'll see that the uh, average is 11 and the output is 11. So there's no error because the index isn't out of range, so it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. Now, if we take this string and plug it in there and then run it. We're gonna get uh, kind of like what we saw before, an unexpected error. So this is uh, an unsupported type uh, because we passed in strings instead of numbers. And 
that's all this is doing. So this is just catching the things that we didn't anticipate or we didn't know about. And then what we can actually do is build that into our uh, try statement here and just add it to it. Um, but again, you know, what's powerful about this is when we're testing it, we can troubleshoot it and find those things quickly, um, change the code, test it again, and then, you know, just keep refactoring it until it gets, uh, gets to a point where it's outputting what we expect. And then also this data could be useful for a part, you know, parsing into like a, a database of some sort so that you can track this stuff. Uh, if it's being used by a bunch of people, uh, just in case there's any weird conditions that might pop up so that you can be um, uh, kind of proactive with it and build in those uh, conditions uh, over time so that the automation that, you're, that you have just continues to get better. Uh, by the way, this is kind of cool. I've never used this before, and I was just reading about it, and... All this is, and I'm probably not going to do justice to what, there's probably more to it, but this will return the local um, um, variables within a function. So in this case, the calculate, calculate average function, this will return those local values. We've only got that one function, but you can uh, use that to then determine what in this case, what that value is, and if it has a value or if it doesn't, uh, return you know a certain certain thing based off of that condition. So I thought that was kind of cool, kind of interesting. But anyways, I hope this helps, and hope this helps you while you're developing your Python scripts, because this can be really powerful and uh, useful when you're testing. So you're not just relying on the warnings you might get or just the uh, output of a Python script and you can build things a lot quicker. So anyways, if this helps, like the video, comment if you have questions or if I didn't cover something you expected. And yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.